grabs Eva because he's still in the dream. And she, first of all, I'm thinking, first of all, why did you get yourself that close to him? I don't know. Throw some at the man. I'm sure there's objects in the room that won't kill him that you can throw at him. But I'm not coming near you when I already know when you're in that state. It's, she done had to use Krav Maga moves to like get out of this shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? And guess what? She had to do it again to get away from him. I'm like, throw some shit at him. Stop trying to go over there and wake him up physically. Oh, throw something at him. So he does the whole apology thing when he what comes to. And she does the whole thing of trying to get him to open up to reveal the dream. And then she tells him, and of course he doesn't do it because he's not. So then she tells him what the detectives told her. And he says, and she at first, you know, she's like, oh, well, that's good. You know, that means now you're not a suspect. And he's like, no, we still should be concerned because if someone's covering it up, that means they know I did it. Then he asked her, like, he's like, you know, you can ask me anything, anything you want. So she asked about Dr. Lucas. So we find out Lucas's brother was the one who traumatized Gideon. We got to say it that way because we ain't trying to get ding. And when Gideon had gotten older, he confronted him about it and pretty much told him, you know, I know what you did to me and that he was going to ruin him. And the guy killed himself. And so he left behind a very young son. And so Gideon kind of blames himself for that. And he was like, you can't blame yourself for that. And besides, you might have saved his son from being traumatized, you know? So they have a discussion about moving in together. And she's going to move out of Richard's place after what happened. And she's like, I'm not. She had talked to Carrie. And she's like, I'm moving out. I don't feel right being there. Plus, again, if we're doing the whole trying to make it on our own, like, I need to be playing for, like, we need to be paying for our own place. And so he, of course, was like, move in with me. And she's like, well, what's going to happen to Carrie? Like, I'm not leaving him. And there's there's a dependency, you know, I don't know. It's just a dependency with that. And so he's like, Carrie can move in with us. Like, you know, Gideon will do anything to get her. So if he got to concede with that, he's like, Gideon, he can live with us. Plus, he's going to take her away that weekend. So... <laughs> He's, he, he's cool so she leaves work Carrie and, uh, is going to meet her at the crossfire outside and so Brent's there as well waiting for her so she goes outside and she almost falls because she's trying because Brent like comes in to kiss her and like she's trying to miss the kiss and uh, he still catches the corner of her mouth and of course when she looks when she looks who's there Gideon and his like fists are bald <laughs> so she mouths to him like i'm so sorry <laughs> and when she gets in the car she texts him on the burner phone you know i love you i'm sorry and they get to the premiere brent walks off to do press stuff and then gideon and ireland come over he speaks to carrie then he asks you know can i speak with eva alone so he pulls her to the side they talk he's upset but not at her or brent it's just the whole situation you know he he's tired of this whole scenario of them not being together in public so then Christopher comes up and he's like, oh, it's great to see you two back together. But he's talking about Brent and what's her name? And Eva. And so Gideon's like, they're not back together. They're not together. <laughs> and um, Christopher's like, well, they should be. It's great press. It's great promo, you know, for them to be together and everything. And then Christopher throws a jab. He was like, besides, have you talked to Corinne again? Because she keeps blowing up everyone's phone. I thought you went to see her yesterday. So Eva goes still. And she goes, it was nice seeing you two. I need to go. So then she hears Christopher saying, you know, don't ruin this. You know, stop messing with them. Like, let them do what they're going to do. So then Gideon texts her on the burner phone. I'm sorry. Trust me, nothing happened. She was like, I believe you, but you should have told me. And then Brent comes over and he's a little tight because he did see her talking with Gideon. So then he tells her, you know, they can do this. You know, they can make, you know, he'll make time for her. You know, he'll fly back when he can. You know, he's based in San Diego. Your dad's out there. Your other friends are there. Like, we can see each other. You know, he's just, you know, he's trying to sell it. And um, she was just kind of like, I, 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 no, I'm in love with Gideon. And he's like, it's not going to work out with you two. So he basically keeps trying to tell her, you know, if you could remember how good it feels 
for me to be back inside you to change your mind and she's like that ain't gonna happen so Gideon left the event after watching the video because it was like a reenactment and it was it was a pretty powerful one so it was just a recreation of what had happened between the two of them Brent and Eva and I think for Gideon to see someone else love someone like you love them and see them kind of return that love when you are all consumed with this person I think it's a little too much for him makes it too real and he had to get out of there <laughs> he's like I can't watch this shit <laughs> this is too much um so Brent and her go to dinner and they go to Arnaldo's restaurant and he comes to the table and he stays and I loved it so he's like the chaperone so um at first Gideon was gonna bring Ireland he was gonna like bust their date but after what he saw he just was like Ugh. so he made sure Arnaldo was there to like watch it and that worked out great so then they go back to her place they go up and uh, well right before they go up Deanna Johnson's there and she's asking questions about the brawl and Brent denies it and tells her you need to check your sources so then she questions Eva about pics from the event with Gideon and she's like whatever I saw an old friend what's the problem so then they go upstairs they talk a little bit and she agrees to see him when she goes to San Diego in a week and after that he tries to leave he I think he tried to kiss her again and she's like no nah. so she goes to Gideon's apartment and he's clearly hurt and he says I hated seeing you with him like that like that was that was tough <laughs> And then he tells her, like, listen, I went to see Corinne because she was hysterical. Apparently, she's been on the wrong meds and they need to straighten them out. And she and he's like, but I called her husband and I was like, you need to come take care of your wife. So he tells Eva, make sure you got your passport in your purse for tomorrow. She goes to work and she gets a call from her mom. Her mom wants to have lunch and talk. Um, and then right when she's about to go to lunch, Mr. Giroux shows up to speak with Gideon. So security is going to get Gideon. He sees Eva and comes over and he has all these nice little pregnant, you know, pleasantries at first. And then, of course, it turns a little nasty. So Gideon walks up and he's like, you need to apologize. And um, then she goes to lunch with her mother. They talk about um, what happened with her father and her mother loves her father. She still very much loves that man, but she needs money. <laughs> And she says, I cannot be with the police. I can't be with somebody who doesn't have money. You don't place a high value on it because you've never been in a place where you didn't need it. But I've been there and life without money isn't, it doesn't work for me. So me and your father are not an option. And so Eva's like, but that's still messed up, you know, because he's stuck on you. Which isn't her fault, but at the same time, she didn't help the situation because you know that man loves you. You shouldn't have fucked him, you know? I mean, yes, you're married and you shouldn't have fucked him too, but you know you know, you don't feel anything. Leave the person alone, you know what I mean? And because all that does, it can confuse a person because then they'll think you do feel something. Because you know when they were in there doing it, they were saying those lovey doveys because they do have an affection for one another. So... She was just like, listen, whatever. I I think it's messed up that, you know, you place such a high value on money. And her mother apparently had a story she wanted to tell her, but she's like, I'll tell you another day. And I was like, no, that, that would have been the time to tell her why you feel so strongly about it. Like, what exactly happened? What was the situation that happened that made you, I got to have money? Because she's like, you already got money. Like, she's been married two other times to rich men and walked away with massive settlements so she's already a multimillionaire in her own right so again what is it you know but she didn't tell her so i'm sure eventually we'll find out that story <laughs> so then gideon and her they're on their way and um to for their vacation and she asked you know what did Jero want and he's like well, he wanted someone to blame for his marriage problems and she was like well they need counseling and Gideon was like or they just need to get a divorce and so Eva stealed and she was like is that what you want and Gideon was like I only want you 
<laughs> then when they get on the um on the was it the plane when they get on the plane he tries out a little bondage with her she's nervous about it but it worked out great and um he just did cuffs and like blindfold and then of course you know they had an intense fuck session so they get to the um and actually the crazy thing about it was that session on the plane so she was like she wanted to be inside of him okay her words so what she did she basically she wanted to finger fuck his ass and that's what she did at first you know he was against it so she like made it to where he was like eating her pussy at the same time 69 and then he got a little bit more comfortable and then that's what she did and then he had like this explosive orgasm they both did and then afterwards he like cried <laughs> in her arms i was like oh shit <laughs> so they go to caribbean some feels off um and so while they're eating she asked him like did i break something with us like did i you know i'm sorry if i did and then she runs off and she jumps in the water so he of course pulls her up and he's like angel and he kisses her ferociously and then he says marry me and she says yes and at and at first i was like why did she say yes because she was like i didn't say it wasn't yes to that it was when he said angel she said yes wasn't the marry me shit <laughs> so at first she was like it's too soon and you know she was answering the him saying angel not the marry me part and he was like you own me there's no one else in the world for either one of us like i need this and he had already asked her dad when he was in town. He And he even recorded the conversation so she'd believe him. And so finally she agrees and he and he's like, okay, we're getting married tomorrow. And she's like, that's too soon. And he was like, listen, I want the first time to be about just you and me, no one else. He's like, I'll marry, I'll marry you a million times after if you want to, but just please give me this. And she agrees, you know, that they, you know, they'll do that but they'll they will tell everyone else that they're engaged because it'll break it'll hurt carrie and her mom if they're not there for that special day for her and she knows that um but i don't that's a, that's just to me with him and and i think it's a matter of him being afraid of losing her but i'm like a piece of paper is not going to keep her you know what i mean <laughs> So I, I feel like that's not a conversation you need to be pressured into. And even though I think they have, they, you know, they're very intense feelings going on. It, it, it just, I didn't like how he did that. Like, I didn't find that romantic. Like I found that that's just let, you know, she caved in to at least say yes, which is crazy in itself. Then you're like demanding of her marry me tomorrow, you know? And it's like, come on. Like if she's saying it's too soon, then it's too soon whatever her reasons are her reasons like give her like she's giving you something and you're going it's not enough give me more give me more and that's and i'm like that's ugh, that's just not healthy the next day she looks you know of course he's got a prenup but the prenup gives her a lot of shit like basically the minute she says i do she gets another 10 million dollars so the five million that she had got from nathan's father um that's already been doubled with the investments that stanton's done for her so she's already worth 10 million when she marries gideon he's gonna get for another 10 million just for saying yes then after each year he's just gonna keep giving her more money <laughs> and then she has the thought too like oh and also when she has children he's gonna give her money for that too so he's gonna like keep giving her a ton of stuff i was like he's doing everything in the world to like make sure she stays even though money doesn't motivate her but that's a lot of money to constantly be getting just to stay with somebody that's crazy so she also thought about the fact that she had just been let that that money sit there she calls it blood money and she's like, you know, I need to be doing something with that. Something that can help other people. And I was like, yeah, just sitting on it doesn't do anything. Like, you you can use that to help people, you know. They still have that issue of, like, sleeping together. So, they decide, she decided, you know, if there's a way to get, like, a room to where they can make the bathroom or something like their middle thing and and that way they're not fully separated their rooms are still combined but they are in like separate rooms but 
still kind of connected and he's like listen i'll get the architect you can go over whatever plans you want to do you can do whatever you want to do so then they get married beautiful ceremony 